The Royal Navy's Air Force. More than 150 combat aircraft able to operate in any environment, day or night, from land or sea. A multi-role force of fast jets and helicopters. Always ready to support the Royal Navy wherever it's needed, this is the Fleet Air Arm. The Portsmouth-based aircraft carrier HMS Invincible is 200 miles inside the Arctic Circle with the Fleet Air Arm's Commando Helicopter Force. It's part of a multinational amphibious force on exercise joint winter. The Commando Helicopter Force is a group of four squadrons whose role is to support the UK Armed Forces. During this exercise, its Sea King helicopters will transport Royal Marines from ship to shore and then to whichever part of the battlefield the Commodore decides they're needed. With up to 700 Marines involved, the Sea Kings are kept busy and even this huge ship is fully laden. It's a pretty packed place. So you can imagine that when we've got a busy flying programme, we could be often ending up, in fact almost all the time, with more aircraft in the air than we actually have landing spots available. Now, to, to achieve all that, and the main thing really to say, it takes a lot and lot of practice. Not from me, but on behalf of my team. It's the guys here in the control centre, it's the people down in the operations room, it's the guys on the flight deck, lots of people involved to actually make it all happen and make sure we don't end up with aircraft sort of running out of fuel, not being able to get on the deck. It's not a safe environment to be in. We've faced icing conditions, winds across the deck at 50, 60 knots. It takes a lot of practice, a lot and a lot of practice. And of course, with that, it's teamwork. Class 2 7 drive. Very good. Start with 20. Start with 20. Uh, Invincible is the fleet flagship, which means we're the high readiness carrier, which we're at short notice to deploy anywhere in the world. We have a number of roles. Our first role is to be a strike carrier, that is, using a fixed wing aircraft projecting joint force fixed wing uh, from sea to land, delivering precision munition from sea into the littoral or shore. A secondary role is the landing platform helicopter role, which is really our assault troop carrying role. And this is what we're doing in exercise joint winter, projecting assault forces from sea to land. So what do the Commando Helicopter Force and the Royal Marines gain from an exercise like this? Exercise Joint Winter is designed to acclimatise the Royal Marines to the harsh environment of Northern Norway. Uh, it's designed to allow our pilots uh, the ability to practise in whiteout conditions, in snow and in low temperatures. With more than 7,000 personnel from four countries, 50 aircraft and a dozen warships, Joint Winter is a logistical nightmare. We've been planning this uh, exercise for about nine months now, and it's a fairly sophisticated exercise involving land, sea and air forces. At its core is the requirement to land an amphibious force based around a, a commando group, a 4-2 commando, uh, on the shores of Norway. Uh, we've got a task group of about a dozen ships, including HMS Invincible and HMS Albion. Uh, we've got up to 34 helicopters supporting that operation, uh, and also 2,300 troops of various descriptions drawn from the Royal Marines, the ARIA, and in some cases the Army as well. The Commander Helicopter Force was titled, uh, as it is now, only quite recently, but the force itself was formed way back in 1947 to support the Royal Marines in uh, their business. In recent years, we have become part of the Joint Helicopter Command, a joint force of battlefield helicopters that supports a wide variety of uh, operational units. But our principal customer 
the unit that we work mostly with is 3 Commander Brigade. Commander Helicopter Force is actually enabling um, us to put the assault troops on the ground. And in this case, the assault troops that we're using are the Royal Marines. A 4-2 commando are heavily involved in this exercise. And really, we're using the utility of the Joint Helicopter Command um, to take those troops from sea to shore. Last night, uh, we did a twin assault, an air assault from this ship and landing craft assault from HMS Albion uh, to regain territory taken by the opposition forces. Well, basically, last night there was an assault by Paul 2 Commando into two objectives. Um, they went in primarily by seeking helicopters um, with a further assault by surface. Our role in supporting that was to identify any enemy that could interfere with that and also to provide suppression on uh, enemy positions on those objective areas. When we came in last night we were directly into the tasking that we, uh, we were required to do. Uh, we sent off uh, an aviation patrol uh, in the dark uh, using their night vision goggles uh, to fly low level into the vicinity where 4-2 Commander were being inserted to provide some overwatch and uh, during that time they uh, managed to get in contact with the uh, enemy forces on one of the objectives uh, that they were due to support uh, and destroyed two armoured personnel carriers on those objectives using the tow missile system which is in the links. Once the objective is achieved, HQ requires the force to move to a new base. But before they can do so, the new location needs to be assessed for suitability, particularly in these conditions. Um, initially, uh, myself as an operating base commander will go out uh, and, and recce and have a look at an area that's suitable to take in this case five sea kings. Uh, when we go there it'll literally be a, a quick look to see if we can get in there by day and night and it's a safe place to operate. Once that's done I then set up communications with, uh, with the commander helicopter force and then we will then call the aircraft forward. Twenty-four hours ago this was um, just a snow-covered site. Um, but it's, it's had a, a mini airfield effectively dug into the hillside here. As soon as the aircraft move in, once they get into the location, they'll um, start putting up their tentage and uh, camming out the aircraft. so that the, uh, the visibility of that operating base from the air and from the ground is minimised. Um, what we would have done is we've been disembarked from the ship, we've come to this location, we're setting up all our logistics um, gravy train um, of, of fueling vehicles, spares vehicles, ammunition vehicles, um, food vehicles, water vehicles, and all the additional bits that keep us going all the time. Once that's set up, we can then obviously operate there. The role of the seeking is to move troops primarily uh, into the battlefield, um, but also just as important, we move equipment. We're quite close to the shore here, so um, our primary role in something like joint winter is to move troops from ship to shore, and then once they get ashore, to then move them around the battlefield. 
we end. Uh